brokenness I've got true love instead of pain That's freedom though you've captured me I've got joy instead of mourning That's beauty in my brokenness I've got true love instead of Joy instead of morning. Cause you give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Cause you give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. There's beauty. There's beauty in my broken. I've got true love, true love instead of pain. There's freedom, there's freedom though you captured me. I've got joy, I've got joy instead of morning. Mm, there's beauty, there's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love, I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom, there's freedom though you captured me. I've got joy, I've got joy instead of morning. Cause you give me joy down deep in my soul, yeah. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Cause you give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Yes, you give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. I've never been so free, calling your love for me. He loves me. I've never been more secure, knowing your heart, Lord. Never been so free, caught in your love for me. I've never been more secure, knowing your you give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, yeah. Cause you give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Oh, come on, just worship the Lord with me today. Just lift your hands. He's great and greatly to be praised. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hey, he will give you beauty for ashes. Yeah. You give me joy. This week we're going to be looking at renounce. Now the definition of renounce is to formally declare one's abandonment of a claim, a right or possession. So tonight we are coming into a place where we are saying we are not staying in agreement. We are not coming into agreement with what doesn't line up with God's word. But we are renouncing any association and any behavior and anything that is linked to that which displeases God. So tonight, if you would uh, come into agreement with me around the word of God is I renounce all lust, all perversion, all immorality, all uncleanness all impurity and all sexual sin in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so let's look at Matthew 5, 28. Matthew 5 says, but I tell you that if you look at another woman or man, uh, you are already unfaithful in your thoughts. And another version says you have already committed adultery in your heart. 
And so we see here that the standard is quite high in terms of, you know, because when, we, when you talk about lust, lust is actually a, a desire, a psychological intense force and desire. Lust re results in actual physical behavior. Lust, lust could result in uh, adultery or fornication or a perversion or a sexual sin or some kind of immorality. But lust itself is, is that force, is that intense feeling, is that desire for something or someone. We know in the Old Testament that David lusted. And, you know, yes, he then went to act on it, but that lust was that desire, that thing that, that caught the focus of his eyes. And so tonight, I think you and I need to look at our lives and say, what has caught the focus of our eyes? What has caught our attention? 1 John 2, 16 says, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but it comes from the world. And so um, you see lust often associated with money, power, or sex. And um, they actually say that's what brings powerful men down. It's usually one of the three. Um, so the Bible says in Romans 8, The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. And so we see here that the scripture is telling us that there's a barrier between what comes in the things we see, the, the things that catch our attention in real life or in media, and between us actually acting on it, it grows in the realm of the heart, in the realm of the mind. But if your mind is governed by the Spirit of God, then it starts to push out those things that displease God and those things that are not going to bear um, good fruit in your life. And it begins to push out those things that will actually bring a death. Um, but when your mind is governed by the spirit, you you will experience a life and you will experience peace. And so the, you will life means that you have the ability to experience enjoyment in the ability to reproduce the ability to bear fruit after your own kind, because there's a life, there's ability to to replicate and multiply. But when there's death, there's decay, there's rot, things shrink, things stink. And so. I want to say to us, I, I'm, I'm not saying that we will never ever get tempted. I'm not saying that there's a lot of things in terms of media, in terms of nowadays pornography is just so easy to access. Nowadays, most films are even tricky to watch, you know, um, and there could be a whole lot of temptations around you and a whole lot of things that come to actually um, capture you in this realm of lust. But when you say, let the Spirit of God be the decision maker in my mind. And so I'm not going to allow myself to be driven by my body, but I'm going to let my mind be a barrier so that my life can be governed by the Spirit of God. And so I can know life and peace. Because the Bible says in Proverbs, as a man thinks, um, so is he. So our thoughts are so powerful and so in is particularly in this month of October there is an attack on the realm of your mind there's an attack on your thoughts because as a man thinks so is he and so you're starting to have thoughts where you're starting to feel rejection again you have you're starting to have thoughts where you're feeling like you're being cornered you're starting to have thoughts where you're feeling like your plans won't come to pass and your mind is starting to um, attract and hold on to negative thinking and things that aren't lining up with God's word God's will and God's promises to you. But I want to encourage you to have the mind of God, to have the mind that is governed by the spirit of God. A definition of um, perversion. Perversion means um, a distortion. It means uh, a corruption from an original state or a, an original course. It means um, a, a you know, a, a deviation from something. And so God had an original plan. God has an original plan for your life. God has an original purpose, um, you know, and a, and a will. But the perversion is when in, in and, and this can be sexual and otherwise, where things are distorted and they are deviated from what God originally meant them to be. I want to encourage you that from this day forward, if you make a decision and you say, Holy Spirit, help me with these things that's 
are crooked in my life, with these things that are distorted, with these things that are not quite right, for these things that I've got to hide because they're not right. I've got to hide that side of me from the people who know me in church, from the people who are my friends, because you feel like you can't be honest about the things that are crooked. But you know what? I want to encourage you to bring the crooked things to God, to bring the twisted things to God and let the spirit of God begin to come and touch those places that never got touched before, um, those things that have been distorted for so long that you've, you've actually learned how to live with the, that dysfunction and that distortion, but you've never actually experienced healing. And so I want to encourage you, don't allow lust to be in your life, don't allow distortion and perversion to be a part of your story going forward, because God wants to make you whole, and God wants to touch you and deal with even the things you don't want to come out openly about. God wants to deal with all those bits of us, because if we don't allow God into those spaces, those things start to get a voice and that voice becomes louder than what God's trying to instruct us to do and how God's trying to lead us because we've got this dysfunction that's been growing in the basement. Um, immorality is when you are morally wrong, when, the, when you are wicked. It's usually related to sexual nature, but not limited to that. Uncleanness, dirty, um, things that are not right. And you have the spirit of God inside of you. You know when things are just not right, when these things, it's just not, this is not God. This is not a reflection of Jesus or his heart or how he's asking us to operate impurity is pollution when something is tainted when something's impure and it comes in touch with something that's pure the impurity spreads faster the purity doesn't touch the impurity the impurity is powerful you put a rotten apple and a good apple next to each other the rotten apple makes the good apple rotten and so we've got to watch how we are holding on in this season we have to renounce it's come out of agreement come out of covenant come out of agreement with that which is renounce your claim to that thing in your life some of us have been with our words we've been owning we've been owning our shortcomings we've been owning our flaws we've made it our own and nobody can take it away from us we've given it labels we've built a room for it you know we've accommodated it in our lives we've suffered with certain things for so long but are we willing to come to a place like that woman who pushed through and touched the the hem of, of, of Jesus's garment to say I need the virtue of God to flow in my life and I need that thing that's not right that sexual sin that impurity that wrong thought that wrong behavior that immorality that perverse thing in my life that thing that's distorted and twisted the lust the intense desires that I feel relating to wealth and power and things of a sexual nature. And so if that's you, I just want you to pray with me. Father, right now, even as we read the word of God relating to this, I thank you, God, that your spirit can touch each and every person under the sound of my voice, that healing will come, that the oil of God will flow, that God is nothing too far gone, that you cannot touch, that you cannot change, and that you cannot alter. So right now, Father God, I ask for, for an alteration. I ask God for a, a shift. I ask God, Lord, that every crooked thing, that you make it straight right now in the name of Jesus, that every thing that is that is tainted and impure and polluted i pray god that you would pour your presence in and your word in god and let everything be made clean give everyone a new slate god that we can rise up from this place and go forward tonight with no more condemnation with no more being labeled by a past experience or a past habit i pray that the power of that thing is broken in your life in the name of jesus even as we say this prayer amen amen and amen and i want to leave you with the scripture Ephesians 5, 3 to 9. And the reason I've, I've focused on so much scripture tonight, because the entrance of his word brings light and understanding. So the, the word says, do not let sexual sin, perversion of any kind, greed ever be mentioned among you. This is not appropriate for God's holy people. It's not right that dirty stories, foolish talk, obscene jokes are mentioned among you either. Instead, give thanks to God. You know very well that no person who is involved in sexual sin, perversion or greed, which means worshipping wealth, can have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Don't let anyone deceive you with meaningless words. It is because of sins like these that God's anger comes for those who refuse to obey him. Don't partner with it. Once you have lived in the dark, but now the Lord has filled you with light. 
Live as children of light. Light produces everything that is good and has God's approval and is true. Determine those things which please the Lord and have nothing to do with the useless works that darkness produces. Instead, expose them for what they are. Light exposes the true character of everything. So wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So then, be, uh, be careful how you live. Don't live as foolish people, but as wise people. Make the most of opportunities because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord wants. So I want to leave that encouragement with you tonight is to seek to understand what the Lord wants for your life and what the Lord wants to do in and through you and in your family and in everything you have access to, the sphere of your world. Be encouraged and God bless. Thank you for joining us. See you tomorrow night.